today we will talk about an important issue in surgery which is cholecystitis. In my lecture, I don't like to talk about more about uh, the anatomy and physiology, but in short brief, uh, the uh, gallbladder is a pear shaped with normal capacity about range from uh, 30 to 50 centimeters, uh, cc, sorry. It is located in the visceral surface of the liver. Uh, at the plane, divided the two surgical loops. It consists of fundus, body, infundibrum, and neck. The function of the good bladder is a storage and concentrate pile, also acidification of the pile. So the purpose of the good bladder is to modify, store, and regulate the, the bile flow. It concentrates, storage, and releases in response to meal. When uh, fasting, it is uh, storage of the, the bile, and when uh, after meals or during meal, there is uh, a release uh, of the sphincter of Oddi, which uh, allows bile to go from the gallbladder to the intestine. The gallbladder has no muscularis mucosa or submucosa, mostly of composed of columnar epithelium. The liver secretes about from 600 millimeter to one liter per day, and the normal capacity of the gallbladder about 50 milliliter. So the gallbladder has a great absorptive capacity it's concentrated by five to ten fold of bile compared to the bile in the uh, common bile duct. In this slide you can uh, compare the composition of bile in the uh, biliary tree in the liver and the gallbladder. So how, how the gallbladder store and concentrate? In uh, fasting condition, there is a contraction of the sphincter of Oddi, so the bile goes to the gallbladder. Uh, after meal, the sphincter of Oddi relaxes and cholecystokinin release cause contraction of the gallbladder and the relaxation of sphincter of the uh, Oddi, sphincter of Oddi. Uh, so when stimulated by cholecystokinin, about from half to 70% of the content of the gallbladder emptied, then refill within an hour and an hour and a half after me. So the normal, normal condition, the bare tree is sterile, no bacteria at all. But you can find bacteria in about 30% of patients with symptomatic and chronic cholecystitis. In half of patients with acute cholecystitis, in 60% 60% of patients with gallstone and common bile duct stone, the patient with cholecystitis about 95% of these patients have bacteria in the pile. The most common organism in the gallbladder disease is the coli eclipsella. This is gram negative in aerobes. The gram positive is enterocoli streptococcus. And also there is in aerobe fungal and parasites. Inflammation of the pillarity, it is cholecystitis means inflammation of the gallbladder. Cholangitis means inflammation of the pillarity. It may be acute, subacute, chronic. In patients with 
gallstones leads to better infection. And the better infection leads to gallstones. Acute cholecystitis inflammatory condition of the gallbladder may be acute, chronic, secondary chronic cholecystitis, and primary chronic cholecystitis. In 90% or more than 90%, in acute cholecystitis, it is associated with cal calculi. And you can see in the next slides how these stones cause inflammation. So we have two categories in cholecystitis. A calculi means there is a stone in the gallbladder which causes obstruction of the cystic duct. This is the main pathophysiology. And a calculi cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder, and we could not find a calculus in the gallbladder. It is in cholesterosis when the gallbladder become you named a straw gallbladder, strawberry gallbladder when the uh, cholesterol deposits in the mucosa of the gallbladder and the cholesterol deposits of the gallbladder it causes sometimes called polyps in the mucosa and the cholecystitis glandularis proreference is diverticulosis when out in the wall of the gallbladder and this causes stasis in these pouches which leads to inflammation also, the patient with the typhoid fever cause a chronic disorganism found in the gallbladder and cause chronic gallbladder. So, in, ac in acute cholecystitis, may be chemicals and or bacterial inflammation. Divided, as we said before, acute calculate cholecystitis which represent about 95%, and the acute acalcular cholecystitis means no gallstones, which account 5% of cases. The most common organism which causes cholecystitis is Escherichia coli, Klebsiella, Streptococcus fecalis, Salmonella, and Clostridium in Europe's. So, the acute Calcolecolestitis mostly is a complication of gallstones, and this is common in 10 to 15 percent of the population. But the patient with gallstones, most of them are asymptomatic. What does it mean? It means that these patients do not complain of abdominal pain or dyspepsia or past history of vomiting due to gallstones and you can we can uh, discover that accidentally if we do a routine ultrasound and so on but this patient asymptomatic patient four percent of them become symptomatic annually so every year about 4% of asymptomatic patients turn into symptomatic patients. So let's go to acute calcular policy. Most patients with um, acute cholecystitis have had attacks of pelerichoid before or dyspepsia, and some of them and uh, colonic distension. Some of them diagnosed as irritable bowel. And when we do ultrasound, we found the gallstones incriminated of this dyspepsia and the colonic symptoms. And some patients with acute cholestide developed complications. Uh, more than 90% of acute cholecystitis are associated with gallstones. But how gallstones lead to cholecystitis? This is due to obstruction of the cystic duct. 
and this is infection caused pain which prolonged more than hours then due to stasis inflammation developed due to chemical stasis then the over added bacteria is bacterial inflammation In prolonged obstruction due to inflammation and less blood supply, especially at the fundus of the gallbladder due to less blood supply, sometimes develop gangrene and necrosis, which leads to uh, pillory botanitis. Sometimes the bacterial superadded infection with gas forming organism leads to gas in the wall of the gallbladder called emphysematous gallbladder. And without appropriate treatment, good bladder may perforate. So let us say again the etiology of acute cholecystitis, mainly due to obstruction of the cystic duct due to impacted stone or stenosis or torsion of the cystic duct. This bacterial infection, sometimes trauma and the chemical stimulus leads to acute collision. So, we can, the patient came in many conditions. In acute simple cholecystitis, acute virulent cholecystitis, acute gangrenous cholecystitis, complicated gallbladder, which leads to perforation of the gallbladder, and the most dreadful complication is cholangitis and pancreatitis. So the pathogenesis of acute calcular cholecystitis is cystic duct obstruction by gallstone results in chemical inflammation and then secondary bacterial infection so retrograde, retrograde through the cystic duct or blood or lymph or others. The most common complication of gallstone occurring about from 20 to 30 percent of symptomatic patients. This is a result from stone impaction at the cystic duct. In 5 to 20 percent of obstructed patients lead to ischemia and the necrosis of the gallbladder, especially at the fundus due to less blood supply. In inflammation and not an infection process with bacterial infection, it is appearing as secondary events. As we said before, in acute calcular cholecystitis, 95% of cases related to gallstones, and this is leads to ischemia of the gallbladder, range from 5 to 20 percent of this patient and half of this patient have a positive bile culture. Three-fourths of this patient has a previous attack of pain and pillory colic. Uh, and most of the patient complaining of pain in the right hypochondrium, uh, also dyspepsia, vomiting and anoxia, Positive Murphy sign. What's positive Murphy sign? When you compress, let the patient take a deep inspiration. And when you compress at the side of the gallbladder, he catch his breathing due to pain. This is a positive clinical Murphy sign. Also, there is ultrasound Murphy sign. In this photo, you can see thickened wall gallbladder due to inf repeated inflammation. Also, you can see the bile like a mud, not clear bile, and you can see two stones, one in the gallbladder, more than two stones, one big stone in the gallbladder, and one which incriminated of inflammation obstructing the cystic duct.
A gold bladder disease more common in women. They have had a history of gold bladder disease, and the typical onset is pericolic. And this is pericolic is so severe, and the patient seek relief from pain. It prolonged and lasts more than hours or days. Also, it is associated with vomiting and. Uh, nausea, gold, uh, low grade fever. In typical case of acute cholecystitis, the pain located in the right hypochondrium is colicky, sudden, it lasts more than 12 hours, it radiates to the back or infrascapular region, and the right hand hypochondrium, rare, it's radiated to the left hypochondrium. Uh, the patient with uh, cholecystitis, the precipitating factors are, are fatty male movement breathing, which increase the pain, and also live by analgesics. The constitutional symptoms associated with acute cholecystitis fever, nausea and vomiting, distension, and sometimes constipation. The patient may develop also jaundice. The main symptoms of uncomplicated cholelidosis is pericolic. As we said before, it's caused by obstruction of the neck of the gallbladder due to impacted stone. This pain is episodic, severe, Located in the epigastrum or upper right quadrant of the abdomen, uh, usually precipitated by fatty meals, and come usually at night, it relates to the back, infrascapular, and right shoulder, and also associated with nausea and vomiting. Usually, this patient had previous attack of pillory colic. Some of these patients may develop jaundice and the bilirubin increase more than 4 mg per, per deciliter. As a manifested jaundice appear after 3 mg per deciliter. However, jaundice is uncommon and usually associated with the Merizzi syndrome. What, what, what is the Merizzi syndrome? It is obstruction of a cystic duct or external compression of the common bile duct of a large stone in the infundibulum of the gallbladder. We have a four types of Merizzi syndrome, type one, type two, type three, type four. We will uh, explain it later. In clinical examination of a patient with acute cholestitis, you will find the tenderness and the guarding in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen at the site of the gallbladder. The gallbladder serves an anatomy light on the tips of the ninth cost costal cartilage. And also, the, there is a positive Murphy sign. What is a Murphy sign? It's a rest of inspiration of the patient while you are palpating the gallbladder during taking a deep breath. In a complicated uh, cholecystitis, the patient may have fever which indicates systemic sepsis and it occurs in gangrenous and emphysematous cholecystitis. Also, you will find the elevated of W species and C reactive protein may be elevated. If you found increased level of serum amylase may be suggested and concomitant pancreatitis, gallstone pancreatitis, or gangrenous cholecystitis.
in severe cases of acute cholestasis, we will find high grade fever and rigors, which indicate emphysema or perforation of the gallbladder or cholangitis, or perforation which leads to uh, pillory protonitis. Jaundice can be found in 10 to 25 percent of patient. Also, the patient may be came uh, complicated by pancreatitis. The general examination of this patient, we can find it feverish and tachycardia. In local examination, you will find the tenderness and the guarding, rigidity at the right hypochondrium, both the Murphy sign, which explained before. Post sign. What is what's the post sign? Post sign is hyperthesia at the inf right infrascapular region. Also, we can palpate the gallbladder. You can find the mass at the gallbladder due to obstruction and mucosal or biosal. In general examination of this patient, you will found the patient is feverish tachycardic and local examination tenderness and rigidity at the right hypochondrium, a positive Murphy sign as we explained before, post sign, post sign, what is a post sign? Post sign is hyperthesia at the right infrascapular region. Also, we can find a mass due to distended gallbladder called mucosal or biosal. The investigation of this patient in a complete blood picture, you can see a leukocytosis due to inflammation in the urine and blood, you can see elevated below open. Brain X-ray has a sensitivity of 9% of, it shows 10, sorry, 10% 10 in radiopaque gallstones and porcelain gold bladder. So the sensitivity of brain X-ray is low in patient with acute cholecystitis. What does it mean a sensitivity? Sensitivity, how to detect the positive cases. The most sensitive investigation is ultrasonography. The, it detects stones, sensitivity is 99%. You can see stones, the addition of the pillar tree and the thick wall of the gallbladder, also pericholecystic uh, fluids around the gallbladder, which indicate inflammation. The other investigation which you can do in uh, a patient with gallbladder disease is gallbladder scanning, ERCB, a percutaneous transhepatic uh, cholangiography, which is called PTC, and the MRCB, this is investigation not done in all, in, in all patients, but in special cases. As we said before, in this patient, you can see the WC is elevated, and in some cases it is not elevated. Also, elevation of liver function tests, ACT and ALT, the globin may be elevated, serum alkaline phosphatase, especially in obstructed cases, and uh, serum amylase in a case of pancreatitis. The main investigation of a patient with suspected acute calcarocostitis is ultrasound, which shows enlargement of the gallbladder, thickened gallbladder more than three millimeters, sonographic Murphy signs, which in this patient, when you compressing the probe of the ultrasound at the area of gallbladder, the patient catch his inspiration. And also, you can see the stone and behind it, radiolucent hollow.
Also, you can see the pre-color cystic fluids and abscess and gallstones. Uh, this picture shows the gallstones and the halo signs, which is the reducing area behind the gallstones due to refraction of ultrasound waves. You can see the thick wall of the gallbladder and pericolicystic fluid around the gallbladder outside the wall. In this image of ultrasound, you can see thick wall of the gallbladder and pericolicystic fluids. Also, the, the operator uh, of the ultrasound gave a comment of is it there is a positive sonographic Murphy sign or not. The differential diagnosis of acute cholestitis include acute pancreatitis, acute appendicitis, perforation of peptic ulcer, peptic abscess, perforation of colon carcinoma, hepatitis, pneumonia, and pleurisy at the right basal part of the right lung. To be more precise, the differential diagnosis most commonly due to acute pancreatitis, perforated duodenal ulcer, perforated peptic ulcer, and sites. Rare cases or rare differential diagnosis, acute pyelonephritis, hepatitis, myocardial infarction, sometimes cause pain, like acute cholecystitis and pneumonia. What are the complications of acute cholecystitis? may cause empyema of the gallbladder, it may cause perforation of the gallbladder, especially at the fundus of the gallbladder, which leads to pillary peritonitis, sometimes cause abscess, sometimes cause fistula. Fistula is a tract between two hollow or epiphyllized organs. As you know, there is a relation between the digenum and the gallbladder, which are two hollow organs. When come the gallbladder inflamed, it causes inflammation of the wall of the duodenum attached to the gallbladder, and then due to the pressure of the bigger stone, there has become a fistula between the gallbladder and the duodenum, which causes cholecystoduodenal fistula. Also, the mucosil, mucosil due to obstruction of the uh, cystic duct, in which the gallbladder accumulate mucus and cause mucosil. Sometimes it causes obstruction of the main pancreatic duct and causes pancreatitis. When a stone from the gallstones migrate to the duodenum, slow causes to duodenum fistula, it causes gallstone alias. We don't like this expression alias. It's not alias. Alias means uh, no peristalsis at all. But in gallstones alias, there is hyperperistasis. We call it now gallstones intestinal obstruction. Also, if the stone migrate from the common bile duct to, uh, sorry, from the gallbladder to the common bile duct, it causes pillary obstruction, which leads to obstructive jaundice, or sometimes due to Meriz syndrome, due to obstruction of the gallbladder outside. The wall of the common bile duct, so it's compression of the common bile duct. When a big stone at the infundibulum of the gallbladder compressing the common bile duct from outside, it sometimes causes obstructive jumps. As we said before, in Bayima is a complication of acute calcarocholcystitis. When prolonged resistant obstruction of the cystic duct and super added infection of stagnation of the bile which leads to pus formation in the gallbladder. In this patient had a severe symptoms and they developed cholangitis with high grade fever and very severe right upper 
uh, hypochondria pain and elevation of WBCs. And the patient may become in a sept septicemia stage. Uh, in this patient, it should be emergency uh, surgical intervention should be done to this patient. We will explain this after. Head drops is also a complication. In this case, there is obstruction without superadded infection. The good bladder become severely distended, and the may you can you can palpate it in the uh, right uh, groin, uh, right iliac fossa. And this patient may may be asymptomatic. And this patient cholecystectomy should be indicated to avoid the complications such as in bayema if there is. Uh, this mucus become super added by infection it's become in pyema and pyocele py also it may become due to severely distended and this blood supply at the fundus of the gallbladder become maybe perforation happen or gangrene and perforation which leads to uh, pillory botonitis Also, the main dreadful uh, complication of the acute cholecystitis gangrene results from severe distension and the ischemia of the wall and leads to tissue necrosis. This occurs in markedly distended gallbladder and vasculitis, patients with diabetes mellitus, in bioma, or torsion or thrombosis of the cystic artery. This is leads to perforation of the gallbladder. Also, one of the complications of acute cholestasis is perforation. Perforation may be localized perforation or free perforation. Localized perforation occurs when uh, the momentum, which is called the placement of the abdomen, go to the perforation and seal this perforation, which leads to uh, localized abscess. In free perforation, the pile uh, goes to the um, become freely in the peritoneum and cause pillory peritonitis, and the patient gets septicemia and generalized peritonitis. One of the complications of acute cholestitis is a fistula formation, mostly between the gallbladder and the edema because the edema is attached to the gall, uh, sorry, uh, it's related to the gallbladder. So, as we said before, when two hollow, hollow organs become inflamed, fistula may be developed, which called cholecystoduodenal fistula. In this patient, it may be no symptoms at all which cause silent pillory enteric fistula. And the patient asymptomatic. How can we diagnose it? Diagnose it by the patient may came by uh, small intestinal obstruction, especially the stone obstruct at the ileocecal valve, which is the most narrow valve of the intestine which caused gallstone alias i don't like to say this expression it is gallstone intestinal obstruction it is not alias alias means no peristalsis and in this patient this hyperperistalsis due to obstruction and the treatment of this patient is consists of cholecystectomy and closure of the fistula tract As we said before, the complication of acute cholestitis is gallstone alias. It is in sign of obstruction. In this patient, the biggest stone passes through the cholestitis to the dinal fistula, from the gallbladder to the duodenum. If the stone comes from the gallbladder to the common bile duct and pass through the sphincter of Oddi, 
it does not cause sana obstruction or goldstone alias because it is a very small stones to cause sana obstruction or goldstone and sana obstruction it should be a large stone more than 2.5 centimeter and this pass from the coalesces to through the coalesces to the renal fissure not through the common bile ducts in the goldstone and sand obstruction this is diagnosed by eric x-ray which explained that shows small and sand obstruction multiple fluid level especially at the site of the uh, luc valve you can see the calcified goldstones and if we do the upper gastrointestinal series, we can find the cholecystodenal fistula. We do a laboratory and we can do either stone extraction or we can milking it through the ileocecal valve to the uh, colon and it will pass with the stool. In a patient with porcelain gold bladder, when the calcium salt deposits within the wall of the chronically inflamed gold bladder, and this is diagnosed by plain X ray. So we do cholecystectomy in this patient because it's a precancerous stage. I will talk about the treatment in the next slides and on this slide in this patient with acute cholecystitis we do an easy gastric no fluids so you know no oral intake we give him fluids and antibiotic give him analgesic sometimes nasogastric suction and most of them we do cholecystectomy stick to me now is the main issue of treatment of acute cholecystitis. In the past, we prefer conservative treatment. We do antibi we give antibiotic, analgesic, uh, nothing per mouth, intravenous fluids. But nowadays, the strategy was changed. The main issue is cholecystectomy either by open cholecystectomy and now better by laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And also there was a debate about the uh, timing of acute, of operation for acute cholecystitis. In the past, we prefer to give him antibiotic, conservative treatment, till the inflammation subside, and then we do uh, a cholecystectomy after six weeks, a month, or something like that. This is completely changed. In this patient, it's better to do cholecystectomy. Some say within 72 hours from the attack, some say within five golden, first five golden days of acute attack. But if you are a competent surgeon, skillful surgeon and you have a facility to do laparoscopic cholecystectomy and you are a better surgeon you can do at any time of the attack and better early uh, days from the acute attack sometimes you do you to uh, become a, a, a adhesive inflammation which has become make the operation is difficult but the hepatobiliary surgeon nothing is difficult for him so it's better if you're a competent surgeon skillful surgeon and you have a facility you should do laparoscopic cholecystectomy at any stage if there is embyema of the gallbladder you can do it laparoscopic at any time don't let the patient suffer from the pain, from the septicemia, from the complication. 
and if the patient is fit for surgery. If the patient is in a bad general condition and you have no facility, you can do cholecystectomy. Just put a drain in the gallbladder and then you can do cholecystectomy later when the patient condition become better. Again, if you can do it at every operation without complications from a surgeon and you are a skillful surgeon, but you better a surgeon and you have a facility, do it early. It's better for the patient to avoid the complication. If I ask about the complication of the any operation, we can divide it into general complication, such as bleeding infection, and specific complication related to the organ which you do operation. In the area complication of cholecystectomy, you can patient may develop atelectasis, abscess formation, subphrenic which is subphrenic, a hemorrhage, perifestia, and jaundice. Some patients developed what we call post-cholecystectomy syndrome. What is a post-cholecystectomy syndrome? Post-cholecystectomy syndrome, after the patient got cholecystectomy, he came you again complaining of the same symptoms like before the operation, which may be due to pelvic structure, retained pelvic calculi, cystic duct stump syndrome, which is a long cystic duct with uh, missed stone in this stump, stenosis or dyskinesia as sphincter of Oddi, and pile salt induced diarrhea and gastritis. The other category which represents about 5% of acute cholecystitis is acute acalcular cholecystitis. We found that inflamed gallbladder without gallstones. It occurs in about 5% of cases in the absence of gallstones may develop gangrene and embyema, but less than the uh, acute calcular cholecystitis. Usually occurs after trauma, burn, uh, long-term total brain alteration, uh, aortic aneurysm repair. Uh, symptoms similar, but less than acute calcular cholecystitis. We can do a cholecystectomy, it's better. If the patient's general condition is bad, as we said, we can do percutaneous cholecystectomy in some cases. Uh, in this case, ultrasonography shows that thickened wall and the mud in the gallbladder and the pericholecystic uh, fluid collection due to inflammation, but there is no stones in the gallbladder. 
So it's acute calculus cholecystitis. Acute calculus cholecystitis mostly occur in men. The picture is the same like acute calculus cholecystitis, but less severe. It is difficult to diagnose and ultrasound in the main state of diagnosis. Sometimes the gallbladder is palpable. The treatment of acute calcular cholecystitis is the same as acute calcular cholecystitis, either cholecystectomy or cholecystectomy, which is the drainage of the gallbladder. Here you can see the gallbladder, the X-ray on the right side. You can see a borsodine gallbladder. The calcified calcium at the wall of the gallbladder appear in plain X-ray, and you can see it's and diagnosed by ultrasonography. Um, in this patient, we do cholecystectomy. Why? Because it's a precancer about range from 30 to 70 percent developed cancer which is called cholangiocarcinoma which is a bad prognostic cancer at all so laparoscopic cholecystectomy is better than open surgery because it is a less invasive surgery, decrease pain, which is important to the patient, and decrease the severity the patient can return to work, and less costly than open surgery because the hospital stay is uh, uh, shorter, and the patient is turned to the, his work early, so the overall cost benefit is better than open surgery. Uh, you can do percutaneous cholecystectomy in the patient with high risk patients. Some laparoscopic cholecystectomy, especially in the case of embyema or severe adhesions, you can convert it to open cholecystectomy. Open, to convert it from laparoscopic to open surgery, it's not a complication of laparoscopic surgery. If you, let's say again, if you can not do laparoscopic cholecystectomy safely to the patient, please open the patient and convert the laparoscopic to open surgery. So it's better to do cholecystectomy laparoscopically as early as possible. If you are a competent, skillful laparoscopic hepatobiliary surgeon, this is will avoid many complications, decrease the hospital stay, decrease the costs to the patient and to the uh, government. but you should it safely. If you cannot do laparoscopic cholecystectomy safely, you, you should do it by open surgery. Thank you for everything. I hope you enjoy uh, and get benefit from this lecture. Thank you. And if you have any question, you can uh, call me and ask me. Thank you very much. Good luck then.